Well, it's a very rainy Wednesday afternoon at Dara Days, but we've got an EP3 in to make some noise as we're going to tune this on a K100 board and see what power we can make. Uh, customers fill in this form. Let's find out what mod she's got and we'll go from there. Let's get it up on the dyno. she is and she's got some mods as you can see her take her intake she's got a skunk 2 ultra series intake manifold it's on a um, a solid fab three inch exhaust system um, and some drag cartel dropping cams it's obviously on the rdx injectors as well so as it's on a k100 our richard's going to go and find a k pro to tune it with and then we'll get crack a lacking. So standard power run first, I think. So power run as she is right now. It has been mapped previously. Um, so we'll see how we get on improving upon that. Wednesday-ish. It is a bit Wednesday. Feels like a Thursday. <sighs> I'm, I've, I've, I'm tired for the week and it's only Wednesday. Anyway, beautiful black EP3 in the house. Some beautiful seats in here. It's got a bit of JC Club Sport in the back. It's got our Richard in the front doing a bit of map lap here. We've just started. It's done its initial power run. And now uh, and our Richard's plugged in a K-Pro into it. And, uh, and he's underway, aren't you, mate? Yeah, slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. But it is a beautiful car. Um, and obviously we love the EP3s. But uh, yeah, look at that. It looks really fresh, don't it? Really nice. <laughs> Well, press that press that record button about five times though. Yeah, didn't want to didn't want to know, did it? Didn't want to know, that's how I feel this week. Um Black EP3 now had been previously tuned. They had some good mods. Yeah, been tuned uh by Paul West on a K one hundred. Uh, as we all aware, Paul can perfectly map a car, so there's no issues there. Certainly can. Um customer said he got a few issues with some light throttle transitions and some other bits of bobs that he was talking about, just very light throttle tipping in, things like that. So I said to him, well, anything I say is pop and let's have a look. And anyways, the conversation went further. I believe there was a problem with the first O2 sensor. It when was Paul, turned off when Paul mapped it and Paul turned it off in the map. I said, well, to be honest, that could be a lot of the problem, basically. Uh, have you done anything about fixing it? He says, yeah, I fitted a new O2 sensor. Obviously it's turned off on the map, so obviously you need to look at it. So I said, okay, no problem. We can plug in and we'll turn it back on again. So that's exactly what we did this morning. Still coming up with a fault code for heater circuit on primary sensor one. So assuming at this point it obviously has a uh, you know a hardware issue. So like either, a wiring issue. Yeah, so it could be a wiring issue. It could have been a faulty sensor. I mean, at this it, at this moment in time, those are the things that it could yeah, be. Yeah. Could obviously be a faulty ECU. Could obviously have a problem at the ECU. Highly unlikely. Probably more too likely to be wiring or and or a sensor issue. Um, so obviously we've not necessarily mapped around that. What we've done this time is we left the uh, sensors on and the sensor uh, codes on. So obviously that when this problem does get fixed, we know it's resolved. I think resolved. we'll probably have it back to. Yeah, we're talking. We think we're talking about that. 
Now, this car's got an amazing spec on it. Uh, drag, uh, drag cartel cams, dropping cams. It's got a Skunk 2 Ultra Series inlet, got 70 mil throttle body, the Tegua uh, letterbox induction kit. It's got a three inch exhaust, but it goes to a back box, which has got a twin exit on it. Now, obviously, I have no idea what the design is like inside that back box. It almost like to like, it, some says if it gets changed, just cut it open. Cut it open and have a browse. Have a browse and see what's going on. But we think that's where we're dropping off on power, don't yeah, we? Yeah, I think that's where we're losing power in this car. Now, obviously, with the spec this car's got on it, and two previously that we've done that have had a very similar spec on them, we've all made 255, between 255 and 260. Now, this car's finished on 242 today. It was on 237 when it came in. We managed to get a little bit out of it top end while working at it, but it was a lot of work and it shouldn't have took that amount of work to make that power. I mean, realistically, I've seen cars make that power without the cams in. Yeah. So the cams at this point are, are not really doing anything. And I believe that's down to the back box design. Uh, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the car back. We're gonna have a quick look at the wiring issue, see if we can obviously get to the bottom of that. And he's gonna perhaps contact someone like Solid Fab and see if they'll do a bat box. See if they'll sell him a bat box. See if they'll sell him a bat box. Um, and then obviously what we can do Because it is a three inch system, isn't it? So it just needs probably yeah, it, just gonna need the bat box. Just needs the bat box. I mean, if, if Solid Fab sell him a bat box, for example, and it joins where their box joins, they can sell him that. Yeah. And then we can just cut it at the back of the back box at the back of the box and then re tick it up there so it meets up to the rest of his system if you understand me we'll modify it to make it fit basically yeah. is the answer uh, but I, I personally think that's where the restriction is so i think that we're going to have a go at that at some stage if the customer's uh, willing and ready uh, but we you know from what we've where we what we equipment we've got today we're finished so yeah, we made yeah. we made some gains in uh, wheel horsepower yeah we made don't sort of trend we sort of made 14 wheel horsepower didn't we overall um, but obviously there are some things that come into that as well obviously for example like you know when you first start working out maybe the gearbox is always not fully up to temperature when you're continually doing runs that gets warmer so therefore the drag becomes less, less. but then obviously your wheel loss power goes up because you've got less drag on the gears on the way up so some of it can be the fact that you're making power and some of it can also be the fact that yeah. things are warming up so oils are getting less but then your drag drops as well because obviously you've got less resistance on the way down so then it all equals out and that's what the dyno does and then you look at it you go well, we've only made like five. that's the temperature build of the dyno so. yeah we've literally made five brake horsepower but we've made 14 wheel horsepower it doesn't necessarily relate but that's because it's making a lot of calculations but before and after it looks good so let's yeah. um let's go and have a look at the graph let's have a look at the graph pew and here is said graph and as you can see red line is as she came in and blue line is as she leaves and this is the wheel horsepower line that i'm talking about and this is where we've made about 14 brake horsepower and only making about five at the brake or the brake horsepower line but there's a lot of there's a lot of calculations in there but wheel horsepower is where it's at um yeah so there you go so we can see improvements and hopefully the customer can feel those improvements and we finish on 241 brake horsepower which is 210 at the wheels and that's not a bad shout but like richard says it's got cams in it it should do better and i'm sure we will get more out of it on a next sitting back box front o2 sensor sorted and we'll be back so thanks for sticking around to the end of the video guys like and subscribe and all that jazz and we'll see you on the next one won't we guys uh yeah we will <laughs> see you in a bit